So the scripture reading this morning is going to be coming from Luke chapter 11, starting at verse 1. Amen? Luke chapter 11, verse 1. For those of you without a Bible, it's up on the screen as well, too. I'll be reading from the King James Version. Uh, this is the NIV up here. I can change it as well, too. It's not a problem. But I'll be reading through the King James Version first. Amen? And, of course, I'm going to bounce around through different versions of the Bible. Uh, because I think, you know, if you have a, a good explanation, some versions don't explain it out as well as some others. So uh, I'm going to be jumping around through some versions uh, to, you know, explain some of the other verses. If you have never been here when I preach, I like to bounce around the mic. Amen. I believe New Testament, Old Testament, it doesn't matter. We're going to go through it because I believe that all of it is relevant to what we have what we're going through today. Amen? Amen. So I don't just believe in uh, a New Testament um, or Old Testament. I believe that the whole Bible is the inspired word of God. And we need to make sure we know the whole Bible. Amen. 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 So we're going to start at Luke chapter 11, starting at verse 1. Amen. If you're there with me, say amen. 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 And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When he prayed, said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Amen. And we're going to stop there because I want you to see a, a certain point here in the word that as we explain the, during the first base of prayer, Jesus is being asked by his disciples uh, specifically, Lord, teach us how to pray. How many of you ever come into a situation where you're, you're looking to extend your knowledge about something? <coughs> and so you go to someone who may be an expert on that particular subject, correct? Because the disciples, when they ask the Lord, they asked Jesus Christ himself. They, they knew him to be a, a teacher. And so they asked him, teacher, Lord, teach us how to pray. Just as John also taught his disciples. So instead of going through and giving them a, a, a straight up, you know, okay, this is how you pray. You have to diagram it this way and everything like that. He just basically said a prayer. He said a prayer. And through this prayer, he was able to get an outline or give the disciples an idea of what they should be saying when they're praying. Amen? And so when he said, he said, when you say, when you pray, say. That's kind of a command. Okay? When you pray, say. He didn't say, pray what's on your heart. He didn't say, oh, don't worry. Just say anything and, you know, God knows your heart. God knows what you, what you want to say. He said, when you pray, set. Because he's a teacher, he wanted them to have the example that was set out by the Father on how they should be praying. I want you to really understand that this morning. And we went through this through the first days of prayer. But I want you to understand that in prayer, in your life of prayer, that it is something that you are trying to accomplish. A life of prayer is not just something that you do. It's not an algorithm. It's not a, a method by which you get things done. Prayer is a lifestyle. Prayer is a lifestyle. You should have a lifestyle of prayer. Every time we go and we're doing something, we should, it should not be second thought to pray about that particular thing that we need prayer about. Prayer should be a lifestyle. And so when Jesus is teaching his disciples to pray, he teaches them not just, I mean, we could do a, a, I could do a, a lesson about, you know, basically how you start a prayer. And those type of things like that. But the underlying principles behind prayer exist so that you may understand what relationship is. Prayer is about relationship. It's about relationship. You can't pray to something. You can't pray to someone. You can't pray to a thing without having a relationship with that thing. Amen? So when you are praying, it's about the relationship. There are underlying Themes that exist within prayer. They help us to reach the place where our prayers are effective. So this morning we're learning about how to have an effective prayer life. Not just 
prayer, but how to have an effective prayer life. Because having an effective prayer life is just as important as praying itself. Because if we go out and we look at, um, for example, if we're an archer, okay, an archer, you know, someone with a bow and arrow, you know, Olympics are coming up and everybody's preparing for that, but an archer, their goal is to hit the target, get as close to it as possible, score as many points, amen? So we look at ourselves, we're archers, we're trying to hit the mark with our prayers. So we're wheeling back. And as an, as an archer will tell you, there are certain methods, there are certain things that he needs to do. It's not just put a bow and an arrow together and fling it. He has to aim for the target. He has to be aimed at what he's trying to, trying to hit his target at. Our prayers are the same way. If we want our prayers to hit the target, if we want our prayers to be heard, there are certain things that we need to do in order to have those prayers heard. And so we talk about those being the basis of prayer. The base is like a baseball diamond. This happened before, okay? We're going to go through four. So a baseball diamond, if you understand the game of baseball, baseball player, when they're up to bat, their objective is to get back home, right? In order to score a point. They don't score a point just by going to first base. They have to make it all the way around in order to score on that particular drive, amen? And so each base needs to be touched. Y'all hear me? Y'all understand baseball a little bit? Each base needs to be touched in this baseball diamond. When a guy hits a home run, if he doesn't run around the bases, that's not a home run. The home run, it may allow him to walk around or go around the bases freely, but he still needs to touch each and individual base. So the bases of prayer are the same way. We need to make sure we're touching on each individual base in order for our prayers to hit the mark. We're trying to hit the mark. We're trying to make sure our prayers are heard by God, that we're hearing God in our prayers and that our prayers are being effective because there's nothing worse than ineffective prayer. It's like wasting your time. If you're going to waste your time praying, then there's no point. You're just speaking to yourself. You're not speaking to God because he's not hearing you. So the basis of prayer are that important. So the basis of prayer, the first base that we talked about last, last time was the father fact. The father fact. I don't know if you, if you remember the father fact, the, but the base of prayer, the father fact, is predicated on the idea that God is your father. God is the father. Father knows best, right? I don't know if that's an old saying back in the day or anything like that, but I remember hearing that when growing up. Father knows best. But God is your father. That idea was introduced by Jesus Christ when he came to this earth. When, he, when you pray, say, our father, the idea that God as a father was so intriguing to everybody because the way God had been portrayed, he had been portrayed as this very surreal individual, someone they could not have a relationship with. Because in order to go to God in prayer, they had to go through an intermediary. They had to go to the priest who had to make sure that his life was clean, that he was walking clean, a life that was pure. So when Jesus introduces God as the Father, this idea revolutionizes how we see God. Because a father is someone that takes care of his children. Someone who, take, who, who rears his children. Someone who blesses his children, speaks over his children. Someone that is loving, caring, sharing with his children. And so the idea that God is a father should be, for, should be the, the, the way that we go to God. Because as a father, we can go to him very plainly. We don't have to worry that we're going to be judged by him. I can, I can think your relationship that you have with your father should be one that is open. One that you can go to your father and say, Daddy, I need. Daddy, I want this. You know, And without the fear that your father is going to dash your foot, is going to beat you up, or is going to talk bad about you after you leave him. He, he should be a father that is caring. So the idea that God is a father, he is a sharing, caring, loving father. That is the first base of prayer. That is the first base of prayer. I'm going through a little review here so that you understand that this 
base is the first base, first important base.